DevX, amplifying voices, accelerating change. Please help me welcome to the DevX stage, Dr. Matthew Bauer. What was the most painful experience of your life? Was it a physical ailment or an emotionally trying time? Perhaps it was the loss of a loved one or the end of a relationship. Whatever the case, in those instances, what did you do to alleviate your pain? Six months ago, we found out that my older son was being bullied in school, which unfortunately was at the same time my younger son was going through a major surgery. As a dad, I felt powerless to help, and my heart ached for both my boys. A few days later, just as I was going to bed one night, I saw a news report that my dad's hotel in Sri Lanka had been bombed in a terrorist attack. I called, and I called, and I couldn't get a hold of him. Minutes felt like hours until he finally picked up the phone to say, I'm safe, Matt, but I could not shake the anxiety of nearly losing him. A few days later, I was woken up to phone calls that my grandfather had passed away. And when I got back from the funeral, just when I thought I had nothing left to feel, my wife moved out of the house and we separated. And this, all of this, happened in the course of one week. To the casual observer, I was holding it together, but I was experiencing unimaginable pain, crippling depress depression, and surprisingly shame. At the funeral, I was able to hide my pain amongst the other mourners. Family would say, Matt, you look great not realizing I'd lost 15 pounds in two weeks because I felt so physically ill from the stress every day. Work was a daily struggle. In the office, it was often a race to find an empty conference room when I felt an anxiety attack coming on. In the field, I had to try and contain my emotional breakdowns to the front seat of my car before wiping away my tears, putting that work face back on, and going to meet with team members. Left untreated, my pain was spinning out of control as anger and a short temper often directed at my loved ones. I thought I was strong, but no one really knows how they're going to react to pain. As Mike Tyson famously said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> when I got punched in the mouth, I checked out and I self-medicated. Anything to take my mind off the heartbreak in my marriage or soothe my loneliness from a lack of fulfilling friendships. During the day, I'd use my phone or social media as distractions. At home, after a long day of trying to fake it till you make it, I turn to scotch and sleeping pills to numb out and try to escape my reality for a few hours of drug-induced sleep. I was a workaholic too, had been for years, if I couldn't find affirmation at home, at least I could find it in that weekly paycheck. I was just desperate for symptom relief. And I knew this wasn't going to help fix things. But I was starting to realize that these self-destructive habits were merely distractions. And despite being a pharmacist, I had no idea how prevalent these distractions were. Over the summer, I was in, sitting in a continuing education class at a pharmacist convention. The speaker was discussing the opioid crisis and pain management. He explained that for 20 years, the medical community followed a guideline that all pain must be treated. The goal was simply to diminish discomfort, move you from, say, a 8 out of 10 to a 3 out of 10 on your personal pain rating scale. And look where that got us. Addiction and opioid-related deaths have skyrocketed over that time span, killing over 50,000 people last year. 
And it's not just physical pain. I dispense more medication for depression and anxiety than I do narcotics. We are numbing pain at epidemic proportions. Thankfully, modern pain management is placing more emphasis on restoring function and improving your overall quality of life, not just squelching your symptoms or numbing your pain. Now our goals are focused on function. Can you get out of bed? Can you go to work? Can you live your life instead of living some unattainable, pain-free existence. This got me thinking about my own situation. Maybe not all pain can or should be treated. What if my pain was here for a reason? After the conference, I asked my therapist, Sam, how can I just suppress and push down this sadness and anger that just bubbles up from my pain? He looked shocked and said, who said you have to suppress it? It's here for a reason. Let's acknowledge it and lean into it. It was at this moment that I realized there was power in my pain. I stopped looking at my pain as a symptom, and I put together a new treatment plan, one that focused on restoring function, getting back to being the husband, father, and friend that I needed to be. My pain was going to be there, Restoring my ability to live my life, regardless of the pain, was the new goal. I had a job to do, I had two kids depending on me, and I had a wife I loved very much that I wanted to stay in my life. I stopped looking at my pain as a symptom, and I took it on as an ally. I was moved by Marcel Proust, one of the most influential authors of the 20th century, who said, we are healed by... Pain, we are healed by suffering only by experiencing it to the very fullest. So I stopped numbing it. I let my pain do its work and shape me. My pain was going to be a stimulus, a catalyst for growth to get me out of this rut and make me stronger in the process. This painful time in my life was not a tragedy, but an opportunity to reprioritize my life, find out what was missing, and fix what was broken. A catalyst is something that drives forward a chemical reaction without being consumed as part of the reaction. My pain was this catalyst, driving my personal growth and transformation and not going away. And I was prepared to experience my pain to the fullest. I checked back in on life and focused on restoring myself. I started by putting my phone away and getting off social media. My phone was keeping me from experiencing the people right in front of me. And since comparison is the thief of joy, social media had to go to. I knew I couldn't do this alone, so I partnered with a great therapist, and I restored friendships that I had allowed to wither from being ignored. I changed jobs, too. I left a position that just drained my mental and physical energy. I took that reclaimed energy and I put it back into being a more present, more loving husband and father. I took ownership of my shortcomings and vowed never to take the important people in my life for granted again. I take better care of my physical health too because I knew I could not heal my mind without a strong body. My life is finally moving again and it would not have been possible if I had merely stayed focused on numbing my pain. Make no mistake, these actions by themselves did not make my pain go away. But that was never really the goal. The goal was restoring function in my life. My pain was still there every single day. And it still is right now. Imagine sitting down to your morning cup of coffee. And you hear your son's alarm clock go off in the other room. After a few seconds, you remember those bunk beds are empty. The kids stayed at mom's place last night. And no one is going to hit the snooze button. It is a painful reminder. But I accept it. And it drives me to make the most of my time with my sons when I pick them up from school later that day. 
Pain doesn't paralyze me anymore. It's not easy, but it's the only way to heal. After a forest fire, giant redwood trees release their seeds onto a forest floor that has been cleared by the flames. The devastation is real, but it serves as a catalyst for growth and change. A forest fire swept through my life. And despite my pain, it allowed so many new seeds to grow in the process. If I had tried to put out those flames to numb my pain, those seeds would never have sprouted and I would not be living the life that I enjoy today. The power to grow and change was in my pain. Thank you. Thank you.